Welcome to PDMA Corporation, home of the MC Emacs. I'd like to thank you for joining us as we continue along in our presentation series. Once again, we've got the Vice President of Product Development, Mr. Noah Bethel. Hello from sunny Tampa, Florida. And I am Todd Gunderson, the Vice President of Sales and Marketing. And Noah, we call this case study uh, an oldie but a goodie. You know, it involves inrush startup. It's got to be a goodie. Yeah, because we've talked about this in many workshops. If you come to our workshops, uh, you know, it's kind of like uh, when you're, you can't sleep at 2 a.m. and you wake up and you got that Roy Orbison infomercial on there, something like Happens that. Happens all the time. By that 50s, <laughs> some 50s band there. This is kind of like that same philosophy here where we, it's an oldie. We've had this around for a while. It's a great case study. And it's a great case study, but we just haven't transferred it into YouTube. So now as a... Great, good as time of any to put it in there. So, as it says, in Rush Startup, like you said, it's your favorite test, finds a potential catastrophic pump failure. So, let's get into the data, Noah. Routine testing, uh, this CBM specialist came across the following data. So, this gentleman always wants to go ahead and do an inrush startup for everything, just as a process analysis tool. Exactly. You know, we designed this inrush startup to, and everybody, it generally is applied to the motor when it's starting, but it's such a powerful tool to indicate, you know, torsional and standard load operational type things that people do it on, on a steady state run just to get a look at how that's reacting on an RMS envelope type of graph. Now, the interesting, interesting thing about this motor is that it's in the river. You can't this see is, it. This is suction. This so is a suction you pump. You really right? have to, you know, it's a circ water pump, so it's sucking water out of the river. To Which cool is critical. Condensate. Critical to utilities. Uh, right. So this is a 4,000 volt, 355 RPM, 240, it's 196 bars. This is a big motor underneath. The, in the, it is a big boy. Right. So here's the inrush test that he took. Anything going on here that this uh, is? Yeah, this is just not what all what you would expect. This is a centrifugal pump. It's pulling water off the off the river. Um, it, it you'd expect on a centrifugal pump to have relatively steady state, you know, load and torque. And uh, that's one thing. Unless there's a school of fish or manatees or something that are you know uh, plugging up the inlet or something. But yeah, this is not what you'd expect. And it's not a consistent frequency either. No, it's not. No. So sometimes when we do inrush startup and we see say cracked rotor bars it almost has that as that rotor bar passes through the pole you see a right or even like a, if you got like a damaged um uh you know pump vein you know something that is repetitive consistent a yeah. machine train issue that has some consistency this is not it so it's very inconsistent with the uh with the current fluctuations now we took the same test on this motor because like we said he does it every time he takes that test Back in 2008, very, very smooth. You know, as a baseline, you can't ask for anything better. That's the perfect, you know, s you know, uh, centrifugal pump. And uh, so absolutely. So now we go to our DMOD spectrum where we want to just look at pole pass sideband. Let's see if something's going on. And we notice that most of the noise level in 08 is very low. It's below 0.1. So yeah. let's keep an eye on that. And then when we go back into 2010, wow, it went from 0.1 all the way up to 3. That's a huge increase in noise level. These are significant changes that have to be looked into. So we'll do the next thing for our rotary evaluation test, right? We're looking for pole pass sidebands here, but we can barely see a pole pass sideband because our whole floor has been elevated. Right. This raises a concern from an analysis perspective that, you know, the frequency or the variation of load is changing to the point where it's it's called it's smearing, right? We're basically we're overloading a variety of band, of bins within the FFT or the fast Fourier transform, and it's creating a high noise level. Okay, so it's smearing. We call that the the bend, is what you said. The bend, or? yeah. Each 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 in an FFT, every bend has a you know it's where the like if it's a 50 hertz or like a 60 hertz bend, it gets populated with a sample. And if that sample's changing, like if it's going from if, from load perspective, if it's if the load changes create different frequencies, then it, instead of having one solid peak, you have a whole bunch of peaks spread out over a broadband energy. Okay, so the same spectrum in 08 much lower much more readable you could really define where that pull pass sideband might be at now we'll do a comparison test because we always recommend that when we're doing troubleshooting if you have a like motor mm -hmm. let's take a look at the it. the old sesame street yeah which one, one of these, these is not like, like the, the other, other right exactly so 
pull up we we say okay we're we're highlighting it's going to go towards we think it's more mechanical not electrical and this is what we see it was a good choice to pull it out take a look like i said the, there's still a possibility of some non-machine interference in the river um you know that something was clogging up that's what they were concerned about but sure enough you can see the inlet to the pump here the you know the it's it's broken cracked what's that what that's going to do is create flow differentials mm -hmm. you know even though you got that colander effect to try to get the flow steady into the inlet it's just not going to happen so cavitation is going to be erratic uh, it's going to be problematic and we could see it in a non-consistent load change so this was an ideal situation because we couldn't be seen because it's underneath the water so you have mm -hmm. no idea what that is it could have broken off at some point but they noticed it it happened between 2008 and 2010 obviously yeah uh where it may have been weakened upon entrance into the river but certainly once in oh in 2010 when they found out that it, we're going to look at the mechanical side of it. That's what they found. Uh, and good catch for them. Great catch. So after the repair, this is the end result. Went back to smooth again. The only way to truly come up with a case study is to see it through and see the results. That's That looks just like yeah. the earlier test, the yeah. baseline. And it looks like the comparison motor as well on alpha. And the spectrum went down below 0.1 again. Very right? nice. So this works well. New baseline. New baseline. Cost of this failure would have been substantial had it occurred during peak season, right? It's always the case. When you're producing megawatts, June, July, August, and now sometimes even into September. It's a heavy load. So uh, it, it definitely was uh, beneficial to find that at an opportune time. Well, Noah, that brings us to the end. And as always, we appreciate your input into these case studies. Uh, we thank you for the individuals who provide us with the information that we can present to their peers. And, and one of the things that we like to do is we hope that we leave you with something that will make your tomorrow a little bit easier. So hopefully you learned something. And until we see you again, thank you for your time and be safe. <laughs>